glorious morning. So let's have a look at what's been going on since we last had a look. So I've got um, lettuces. These have been in the ground for a while now, but they've not really done very much. Um, they are in the shade, essentially. They do pick up and they pick up pretty well in this section. Um, last year they were amazing, so I'm hoping it will be the same again this year. But um, until sort of the middle part of the day, this whole little row here is shaded by this big hedge. Um, and so it, um, yeah, it doesn't get as much light as the other sections of the garden. But give it a bit of time. These lettuces will hopefully look super good. Uh, different types there. I've got some cos, some um, red loose leaf, uh, Marvel of Four Seasons and a lettuce called Grenoble and I've got some winter density and at the back over there there is some overwintered onions which are I think white ones and some spinach you can see there. Now right at the very end over there is some calabrese that I have just planted out that does need covering at some point but I haven't got around to doing that yet. This is the onion and garlic bed. These were sown at the beginning of March not sown, sorry, planted out in the beginning of March, sown in February, and they were multi-sown and multi-planted. So you can see that the modules were multi-sown at the time and then planted out as they are. So they get planted out in a clump and then when they grow and when they start to form bulbs, these will just push away from each other. So I've got along this line, um, what have I got? Spring onion lilia some white Spanish onions, some garlic that is home saved. Um, I've got some red barren onions and I've got some pickling onions. I um, can't remember the name of those now. I've got Rose Roscoff and I've got some shallots. So we just walk along. Now these usually would be covered over for about another month, but the weather has been so amazing this bank holiday weekend that I've uncovered everything. It's uh, it gave me a chance to do some thinning for things that had been, you know, too many seeds in one, one bit, and also to um, weed, which wasn't too bad, to be honest. Weeding with no dig is, is kept down to a minimum, which is great. You can see here, I've got a couple of rows. Now these are parsnips. I don't eat a lot of parsnips, so just, just a few is fine. These need thinning out, but they've been under the fleece as well, so they germinated pretty quickly. Over here I've got some red um, kale that has gone over and gone to flower. Such a pretty little flower, but I'll leave that basically before I compost it for the bees. And then I've got some borage calendula and some limnanthes, which you'll see from previous videos that has really come on and is getting nice and full and thick probably too dense but I do quite like dense planting. Peas, these ones are aldermen. I've now made my wigwam. These are made from hazel sticks. Much prefer using something natural than um, you know bamboo, although bamboo is obviously fine but I quite like this natural look and I love the way you can sort of have all these like little twiggy bits that the peas love to grow up. So that's them. They will probably go right well they're a six foot to, six to eight foot pea plant so it's going to be quite profuse that but I'm hoping that that will not fall over in the wind or anything um beetroots so these ones are called boltardi um I've got some over in that shaded part where the lettuce were as well actually and they're called detroits some more garlic and some elephant garlic this elephant garlic doesn't really look very elephanty to me it just looks like a big garlic but there we go and I've got my one and only overwintered fennel, which, which actually is looking huge and mighty fine. That needs harvesting soon. Some early mange too. These ones are called uh, Jean de Madras. They're a heritage bean and um, they're from the Bedworth Seed Swap. So find them on Instagram. They do some really lovely heritage varieties and they do a great sort of scheme where you can Buy, buy into some um, for not too much money and then I can seed save some of these for the following year. Broad beans, these are probably the worst year I've ever had for broad beans. Um, they are growing but god are they slow. 
that I mean I I just don't know why they've gone so slow but um, maybe because they're hiding under this ridiculous kale that's now absolutely huge again the same with the red kale I'm leaving these flowers on for the moment um, for all the bees and then I'll harvest those or not harvest them rather I'll compost them in due course this is the purple sprouting broccoli that a couple of videos back I was saying that I didn't think anything was happening and now look at it literally one of the tastiest vegetables I grow it's so nice and this one's actually gone over now you can see how the heads have kind of split apart they still taste good but um, that does need harvesting so there are I think I did four plants there's only myself and my husband here and that was absolutely plenty in fact you can see I've got so much left um, then over towards the kind of flowery section of the garden I've obviously got my rose bed this will be filled with annual cosmos and some lasinias along here you can see all the verbena bonariensis that's one of my favourites and that has self-seeded. I've got some teasel at the back that's all self-seeded but they're great for the um, finches so I leave that and then hopefully you would have already seen my video on my mason bees but this is the mason bee hotel so they're individual solitary bees and they are in this nest box and they hatch out, forage their food and come and lay their eggs in the hotel. There's lots of cocoons in there and these hatch when the weather gets warmer. I've had quite a lot of hatching already. Um, there's a reel about my first one of the year emerging, which was so exciting. Now they, that actually is, if you're interested in getting those, the company is called UK Mason Bees. Um, they do all sorts of kits and they give you so much advice. It's, it's nice scheme to be involved in. Um, what have I got here? So this is kind of annual perennial bed, a mixture really. I've got some sweet peas there geraniums, some syrinth there, um, echinaceas, poppies, this is like a big blousy pink poppy, I've got some aquilegias, more teasel, Californian poppy, now this one interestingly this was self-seeded and has gone so much better than anything that I've sown this year, clematis and I've got cornflowers that I've popped out in the ground that I sowed from seed and some more calendula hiding down there. So this section will be full of bees and butterflies in the summer. Um, I put all my cosmos out in between my roses here. So this whole section just looks amazing. I love it. It's very kind of cottagey and just loose planting. I don't really have any kind of set planting ideas. I just shove it all in. Little, look at how pretty those are. So these are anemones. Didn't even know I had them. They just popped up this year. Beautiful. Um, I've got some syrinth in the pot just outside the greenhouse there and then my cold frame is full of dahlias at the minute and other bits and pieces. I've got a seed tray here full of poppies, nicotania, snapdragons, foxgloves. These foxgloves are sown quite early in the year. These are now getting on. Um, 12th of February they were sown and I've got some early cabbage there 28th of February that was saying that is a cabbage variety called greyhound some more calendula and some cornflowers at the back and what else I've got here so this sort of rough part of the garden I've got some alliums these are pretty much wasted for on me really I don't know I don't want them in the garden really but I, I like to grow them and I don't think putting them in pots has been actually very successful but we'll see if they do anything um, more garlic, can't ever have too much garlic. Interesting to see whether these do better than the ones in the ground. This is in a, um, like a, a wooden truck filled with compost. Doesn't get full sun the whole day, but they, it does get it for a good proportion of the day. So, I mean, they're looking pretty thick, the stems. So hopefully the bulb underneath is good. Um, and that's it, there's my shed. But that's it. Um, I'll have a look in the greenhouse next and let's see what's been going on in there. So, on to the greenhouse. Um, most of this stays covered up at night with fleece that you can see on the floor there and some of the lids 
the plastic lids go on top of the um, tender things just to keep them a little bit warmer. I think the temperatures are about six degrees at night at the moment, so not too bad, but there are some things in here that definitely don't want to get cold. So, um, right, let's just start going around. Um, I've got some red Duke of York early potatoes. These ones were sown, gosh, I think about, I want to say the 20th of March. Um, I think they were saying, yeah, mid-March mid time. Um, I've just got one pot or uh, one potato or two potatoes per pot. And then I've got some carrots that have come up now. Now these will obviously need to be um, thinned out. These are way too many. But the, the reason I've sown them in the pots this year is because I got given a load of topsoil, which to be honest was like really, really sandy. So not particularly very good for the garden, but brilliant for things like sowing carrots so I'm just utilizing some really big pots that I've got and I'm going to see how they go this year and um, they're in the greenhouse at the moment obviously but they will go out in the summer um so what have I got here pak choy I've got some kale and some swiss chard these have just been sown 10th of April they'll be um kept in these modules until planting out time so no need to split them up. The Swiss chard is multi-sown, as you can see, and that will stay in there, um, be planted out multi-sown as well. A few nasturtiums, bits and pieces, marigolds and bergamot. Bergamot is one of my favorite um, herbs. So that's a, not a very good example, actually. Let's find you a better one. Mm -hmm. Here we are. So, this is bergamot and it produces the most amazing, lovely purple, sort of wispy spires um, flowers and, and the bees love it. It's lemon bergamot and it's a monada. So it sort of has a spire and oh, they're, they're so pretty. So I'm, I'm growing quite a few of those. Um, I've got some beetroot. So these ones are bull's blood, really good for leaf eating as well. I've got some um, Boltardi out in the ground already. These ones are just getting a bit bigger in their pots and then they'll go out. These I got given, so um, that's why I haven't put them in modules. These were given to me, so. Um, I've got some geraniums that I have overwintered. These were cuttings from um, a variety, what was it called? Um, Attar of Roses, so it's a really pretty pink flower. Um, I love it so, and these actually have done quite well. Some of them had flowered so I have nicked the flowers off. They're looking a bit yellowy from their winter spurt but um, I think now I've potted them on they should perk up a little bit. Sunflowers and then over here these are things that are still sitting on heat mats for germination. So I've got cucumber, I've got some celeriac and some celery. The celeriac and the celery were sown on the 21st of March now these are quite slow, um, you know, it's what, the 18th of April today, so that's a month on. Obviously germinating well, but they're quite slow in getting there, so you just have to be a little bit patient. When these are a little bit bigger, I love these, look at the leaves, they're so cute. Um, when these get a little bit bigger, they'll all be pricked out into individual modules to grow on. Cucumber, that's market more. And then in here I've got some squash sitting on the hotbed. These were sown on the 10th of this month, so this is what, a week later. I've got zucchini, delicata, Queensland blue, Oregon homestead sweet meat, luchiki curry, crown prince and custard white. Um, now they will all go, well bar the courgette I think, all the squashes will go to my other plot up the road which I've managed to acquire this year. It's a small plot but it's perfect for things like squash. I don't have to visit them particularly, they can just get on with their own thing and obviously squash do need tons of space which I don't have here so I'm really excited about that. Basil, these ones have been pricked out a while ago, uh, they're just standard classic Italian basil and then in here I've got some other basil that has just started germinating so this is too small at the minute to prick out um there's some thai one and some red basil there some more squash in that tray nothing's happened with that yet um what's in here more squash basically this is kind of like 
my squash propagation area uh, and these are loads of courgettes so I grow as I've mentioned before grow way too many um, for myself but I do sell quite a lot out the front of the house so people love squashes and cucumber uh, squashes courgettes and cucumbers so they will um, be getting on the sale bench this is the hotbed you've obviously seen this before if you've watched my other videos it's a hotbed made of um, just uh, I think this is plywood can't remember what that is um, it's filled with it's got a layer of plastic to stop the water leaking out and then I don't know if you can see in there it's got two inches of sand an electrical cable and then some more sand and on top is some capillary matting and that is regulated by a temperature gauge at the moment it's reading 22 but I have set it for 24 um, to be honest I don't think it's as warm as sitting things on an electrical heat mat um, probably because I've put the capillary matting on the top but it has yeah I don't I, I it's quite good to have a massive area like this but germinating wise I find these mats a little bit more direct heat so germination is probably a bit quicker on those and then they can come over here and sit on this warm bed so all these um, things on this bed here are things that I'm keeping so I've got some cucumbers that are just germinating here these are market more and I've got a whole load of aubergines at the back they're looking mighty fine now one of these aubergines this one it just says tap water only now this year I'm trialing something from a company called plant surge that um, have given me a, a um, magnet that you put on your hose and then when you water the plants it magnetizes the water and is supposed to um, really help the plants grow um, the jury's out in the minute I'm just seeing what grows best what doesn't grow well um, now these are all my peppers loads of different types so I've got sweet peppers and chilies I'm really excited about this one which is called Weary Weary supposed to taste absolutely divine now I've tried for two years to germinate this one and this time it's looking really good quite small still but very healthy lots of growth on it lots of side shoots so I'm excited about that one and I've got you know really fancy ones like Zimbabwe black I've got Buena Maldata um yeah lots of chilies I love chili so the more I can grow the better and I love all those weird and wonderful shapes and sizes the same with the tomatoes a lot of these tomatoes here that you can see are heritage ones and ones that I've acquired this year that are you know, st fancy ones so yellow purples big ones little ones um just a bit different to your norm I've obviously got some normal ones like Alicante and some ones that I really like um I think my favorite out of everything I've grown so far is something called Rose de Burn it's um, like a medium-sized tomato and it's like a soft rosy colored um tomato it tastes amazing um and I've seed saved most of my tomato seeds uh, as well these ones here are all for sale so quite a lot there they're ready to go out on the sale bench same with these chilies here lots of different types and then what else have I got lettuces and some more basil being pricked out here so the lettuce in here are bloody warrior and Saragossa out already on the plot are um, lob jots which is a cos lettuce and what else have I got out there? Uh, winter density and marvel of four seasons. More tomatoes. These are pretty much standard ones. So some plum tomatoes and some cherries. Always sowing more than I actually need. More tomatoes there. These are my leeks. These have been outside for the last few days. They don't really need heat leeks, but um, they're in the greenhouse overnight. And then I've got some sorrel at the back. Incidentally, those leeks will be planted out as they are. So you can see they've been multi-sown. There's um, five or six leeks per module. And these, I don't know if I can do it with one hand. Ow. These will be planted out like they are. So I can't actually, there you go, I can show you. You see that module? That gets planted out as it is without splitting the leeks up. And the leeks will grow really well together. Ooh, the trouble putting that back. 
Um, they grow really well together. You might get slightly smaller leeks, but I don't mind that so much. And they just kind of push away from each other when they're growing, a bit like when you multi-sow onions. So they do take very well to that type of sowing. And for me, because I've got quite a small space, um, it's a perfect way to, to get a lot of leeks in quite a small area. And then lastly, on this side, I've got really the sort of annual flowers that I grow. So essentially just cosmos and zinnia um, and some marigolds. Now, these zinnias really hate any type of cold. So they are always in the greenhouse till it's like midsummer or early summer, rather, I should say. Cosmos, lots of different types. Quite a lot for sale out the front and then some for me. These, these will be um, pinched out a little bit when they get a bit taller. So you would pinch out the tip, the growing tip, encouraging side roots to grow. I've got a video on my uh, YouTube and on my Instagram account about how to do that, but I'll be posting another one this year when I do. Bits and pieces of herbs here. This thyme was grown from seed, looking gorgeous. Now thyme, God, I think I grow, I, I sowed quite a lot of thyme seed and this is the only one that came to fruition so I'm pleased with it but I'm nurturing that inside the greenhouse it probably doesn't actually need to be in here at all and then a bit lower down just a bit of a mess really so coriander um I've got some tarragon French tarragon one of my favorite herbs that's a perennial that comes back every year I've obviously got the obligatory mess of rocket that is going over it is going to seed now though so these will be saved once they actually do dry out. Um, they'll be saved and they'll be given to my customers that are on my seed subscriptions. If you're interested in finding out about those, I sell the seeds that I home sow from my garden, um, um, as well as sourcing seeds from the UK. And I do a subscription where um, people receive seeds every month at the right time to sow. Um, it's perfect if you're not sure what to sow when um, and it's I you know I choose the varieties for you so it's quite a nice surprise that you get through the post every month and I obviously send growing instructions um, I do that via email to save on paper and um, I'll send you tips and things in my blog every month as well so if you are interested you can head over to my website um, the link is in my bio but it's www.queenofseed.co.uk I'm just showing you the garlic here. So this garlic is inside garlic, obviously, and looking quite good. I've never grown garlic inside before. Um, Charles Dowding does it, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, this will obviously probably be pulled up after the tomatoes go in, but there'll be plenty of room for the tomatoes and the garlic to live alongside each other for a while. So I think that's it. It all looks a little bit messy in here, I'm afraid, but um, hope you enjoyed the tour and I'll show you what's been going on in another couple of weeks.